I do believe the board has made a, a, a significant step in rooting out a cancer of the district that caused so many problems. In tonight's big story breakdown, we're digging into the big takeaways from the State Board of Education meeting and the response from Oklahomans. After months of keeping Tulsa in the dark on the future of its school district, today the State Board of Education unanimously voted to approve their accreditation status. Fox 25's Peyton May spent the day at the Department of Education and brings us the debate. In a jam-packed meeting, this State Board of Education covered foreign governments giving money to Oklahoma schools, policies for pronouns for students, and of course, the Tulsa accreditation decision. I would advise Tulsa Public Schools, their leadership, do not test me. Strong language coming from the state superintendent before approving the Tulsa Public Schools accreditation status with certain conditions. The unanimous vote came with a few jabs at the former Tulsa superintendent who stepped down this week and what she said was for the best interest of keeping the district locally run. I do believe the board has made a, a, a significant step in rooting out a cancer of the district that caused so many problems. Tulsa's accreditation with deficiency comes with conditions that must be completed in the next three to four months, including correcting F grade performing schools, a development plan for reading initiatives and provisions to prevent embezzlement. We will be bringing Tulsa Public Schools back in a few months to look at these deficiencies and see what's been done in regards to those deficiencies. One of the handful of lawmakers in the building, Representative Regina Goodwin, doesn't think those goals are realistic in such a short time period. You don't just say I'm going to give you three or four months and you better perform or else. What kind of plan is that? But Tulsa board members in attendance pledged their commitment to build the school up. Tulsa Public Schools has been a district in construction, whether we understood that or not as long as OSDE will work with them. I feel like um, it is incredibly important for me to say today that I would make a plea to call off a tax. We can't risk disruption. We can't risk more threats. And we certainly can't do anything that will actually cause harm to our students our teachers or their families. TPS also has to meet with OSD once a month to show the district's progress. Reporting Peyton May, Fox 25 News. Several parents at the meeting raised concerns about the impact Walter's rhetoric has had on student safety in Tulsa because of the threats that are still being made against Union Public Schools. You say we need a strong leader. But you're only really strong when you're making videos in your car or holding a private surprise press conference at a closed place or answering softball questions on Fox News or bullying librarians on Twitter while the police search her home and her school. Not one day in a row, not two days in a row, but today. The district received bomb threats at three different sites today, including Ochoa Elementary. The school's communication director says the threats are similar to the ones they've received the past few days. Tulsa Public School officials responding to the outcome tonight, saying they're grateful for the State Board of Education's decision. District leaders say they remain dedicated to their mission of providing high quality education to students and will continue to foster an environment of excellence and growth. They say the State Board of Ed committed to working with their school board to address educational outcomes and ensure transparency in district operations. Leaders state this work is already underway and shortly after that meeting wrapped up, Superintendent Ryan Walters posted a video on his Twitter page going over his takeaways. Good afternoon, Oklahomans. I just got out of my State Board of Education meeting. And again, there's tremendous opportunity for Tulsa. They've gotten rid of Deborah Gist, who was holding students down, who wasn't hitting the goals that all parents have for their kids. And Tulsa has made that step to move in the right direction. I was clear with Tulsa, the Tulsa board today, they have the opportunity to turn the district around. We've given them guidance, we've given them goals to hit. And this is their opportunity. This is their opportunity to come together and turn around this district. I will not allow Tulsa Public Schools to fail. Either the district will turn it around or I will. I am hopeful to see Tulsa turn around, but there will be accountability, there will be monthly checks, and then we will come to a hard decision on what happens next. History is full of these moments where you have the ability to change course, and Tulsa's given, been given one right now. They've been given the opportunity to turn it around. I'm excited for the future and excited to get these kids learning. 
Governor Kevin Stitt weighing in on TPS's accreditation today after speaking at an event in Tulsa. He says he believes the State Board of Education made the right call. I think that's probably the right thing to do. Those deficiencies are things that uh, I think parents want to know about. Uh, one of them was simply, um, hey, let's teach teachers the science of reading. How do we make sure that key kids are reading on grade level? Uh, so that's pretty standard. And then also, what's the plan to, what are you going to do about failing school districts, failing schools? If there's F schools within Tulsa Public Schools, what's the plan to address that? And so those deficiencies are just pretty normal. The other one was, what are the internal controls on embezzlement? Uh, because I think the state auditor found, or one of the audits found, some, some missing money. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure at the state level that we have the controls in place so that doesn't happen again. Stett says he thinks the board asked for reasonable accommodations and says it's now up to the Tulsa community to improve their district. We're also hearing from several Democrats in the Oklahoma House tonight, starting with Tulsa Rep Melissa Provenzano. She says she was pleased to hear so many board members want to dig into the details and right there in the meeting. However, she echoed a concern brought up by parents about Walter's rhetoric. Provenzano says it's been designed to distract and sow chaos. Felt his comments they were no different. She states our children deserve to be safe and the willful neglect of that duty, even at the highest offices of our state, cannot and will not be overlooked. Now, we're also hearing from Norman Representative Jacob Robuchkrantz, who says, Walters and the board should be offering to help the district, not dictating to them. He believes this is another example of government overreach. And Tulsa Representative John Waldron, a former Tulsa Public Schools teacher, he says reckless words have consequences. And when the state superintendent's words threaten public safety, he must be held accountable. And while today in Tulsa the schools continue to operate, he believes Walters' administration will become a dark mark in the history of Oklahoma. State Rep Mickey Dollins calling on Speaker Charles McCall and Senate Pro Tem Greg Treat to immediately immediately start the impeachment process for Ryan Walters. Dolan says it's due to the superintendent's persistent weaponization of his office, three bomb threats made against an elementary school and putting innocent lives at risk. He wants leadership to allow lawmakers to vote to remove Walters before what Dolan's calls irreversible harm is inflicted. Hours before the State Board of Education vote, there was a rallying cry from the Tulsa community. I say I strongly believe in Tulsa Public Schools. The Tulsa Classroom Teachers Association organized a pep rally to start today on a positive note amidst the accreditation drama. Some parents used it as an opportunity to send a message to Ryan Walters. Let us teach truth. Let our kids be educated. Would you say rather than a state takeover by Ryan Walters, it's just important to fund the schools and provide resources? Yeah, absolutely. Students at East Central High School in Tulsa walked out of class this morning in support of their school district. This was organized by the nonprofit Protect TPS. Dozens of students walked out and gathered on the football field with signs and air horns. The walkout lasted about 30 minutes before students peacefully returned to their classrooms. Amid a lively and at times fiery debate at the Board of Education meeting. A couple other topics took center stage. Oklahoma's top public ed officials shared concern over districts pronoun policies and Chinese Community Party propaganda in Tulsa schools. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson joining us live from OSD with more. Tom, what else do we need to know about this? Adam and Wendy, the state superintendent here is asking for information from districts on their pronoun policies. He's also looking for details on any foreign funding from nonprofits making its way into Oklahoma public schools. We want every practice in a school grounded in truth, grounded in reality, or it undermines the entire educational system. State Superintendent Ryan Walters wants to know how districts tell teachers to respond if students ask to go by new pronouns. However, one woman who spoke voiced her opposition to Walter's approach. The attempted takeover at TPS is rooted in white supremacy as it has a minority enrollment of 78%. Rather than embracing diverse, diversity and empowering students from different backgrounds, this agenda is a forced widespread conformity to a white Christian nationalist heteronormative ideology. Whether it's the, the pronouns, uh, you know, games that are going on, or whether it is the, um, the, the money from adversarial governments, we, we've got to get this under control. And step one is to figure out, you know, how much of this is going on and what exactly are we dealing with. Another issue for Walters, the threat of Chinese Communist Party propaganda, especially in TPS. 
Multiple reports say the district has pushed back on those claims. However, reports say that in July, TPS renewed an agreement with a Texas-based organization to allow a Chinese-language teacher at Booker T. Washington High to take professional development sessions with the Confucius Classroom Coordination Office. That is reportedly managed by the Chinese International Education Foundation, which, according to the Congressional Research Service, is a non-governmental charitable organization sponsored by the Chinese Ministry of Education. This is pure propaganda meant to undermine our American institutions. And the State Board of Ed is next set to meet on Thursday, September 28th. Live in Oklahoma City, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News. All right, Tom, thank you. The Board of Education once again delayed a vote on whether to pull the teaching license of Summer Boimier. She is the former Norman teacher who resigned one year ago after sharing a QR code in her class that linked to the Brooklyn Public Library. Ryan Walters accused her of sharing pornographic materials and called for her license to be revoked. Well, a hearing in June found the Department of Ed failed to prove their claims and recommended the board not revoke her license. No word on when the board will take up the vote. Boimier moved out of Oklahoma and is now working for the Brooklyn Public Library. Well, that was your big story breakdown. You can find more about Summer Boimier's case and today's State Board of Education meeting right now on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of this big story breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Scan the QR code on your screen or search OKC Fox.